is uh, Logan Paul making mini splits now. I'm not even mad. Sometimes I'm just impressed. Mini splits through the exhaust. It's not our. Uh, it's not our client or customer. Yo, what's going on? Guys, we have a call for a hot area, which is basically like the registers. Uh, so they feel it, you know, the workers feel it. And it's an AC unit that I actually had to put dye into it because I could not, like my electronic didn't go off. Uh, I sprayed where I thought, you know, there might be bubbles and nothing bubbled up. So I was like, you know, let me put a, a glow seal in because uh, best case, it seals it. I've already had a couple that don't call back because it, it worked, right? It, it's an older system. You just want to kind of seal it up and get another couple years out of it, whatever it is. And then um, worst case scenario, it shows you where the leak is. So I had to die in there. I'm going to I brought my light up. We're going to do that real quick and then do a little leak search because I know that's the problem that this has because the, uh, like the suction line is not even cold. So we're gonna check it out real quick. All right, so sometimes you just need to know where to look. So we have a total of one, two, three. I'm still checking, but I don't see any other leaks. And we're gonna have to, when we recover and throw our nitrogen in here, we'll have to bump up the pressure and see if there's anything else. More than likely, they're gonna have us patch that. I'm gonna double check. And uh, they don't wanna buy uh, new units right now and if they do it's not gonna be from us they've been trying to be cheaper lately so I don't know change that out change out the dryer obviously that's this one's fine cut this out completely because I feel like I might be I'm not picking up a leak but I might be slowly leaking somewhere there's no bubbles or anything but cut this out and put a, a port instead. Same thing with this, cut this out, put a regular port. Since we're gonna have it open for a while. There we go. That might be a rub out. No, not yet, okay. So, I'm gonna write this up. I gotta see what gets approved. Unless they want a new unit, then we can quote them a new unit, but might be fixing this one for now. So what did I say? One, two, three, and then all the connections over there, ports. Just as I sus suspected, I don't know why I didn't pick it up last time. Nothing went off. I had no indication of a leak whatsoever until the die kind of showed me where to, where to look. And uh, they're micro leaks, they are super small. So I need to submit a quote because it's gonna be a costly one to repair it uh, versus replacing it, it's up to them. And uh, hopefully I get a 
hopefully they get back to me so I can schedule that for the morning when it's not, I think it's 110 right now. So I would prefer to do it in the morning. I got other calls to get to anyway. It's the end of the day. Uh, this got called in like at four. I'm gonna get out at five. So it is what it is. So yeah, that's super loud, but uh, a lot of it's going wrong with it. I think it just needs a cleaning. I had a fault cold at the error. I mean, at the uh, board, reset it and it's fine. So just a cleaning for now, but they do want a quote on two new units. So I'll get that for them. That might have a leak. The little uh, service port on the Schrader was very oily when I took it off, uh, the cap off. So could have a lot of things wrong with it but it probably just tripped on uh, high head pressure because it's back to 110 and I forgot my tools at the other location so now I gotta go back and do that patch repair not my favorite location but let's pack up all right so this got approved way too late I got my tools and my probes in there and then we have uh, I'll show you the setup real quick that I have for the charging with probes i have a tank here i <laughs> just make sure because all these are gray uh 410a i got a tank here that i'm trying to get rid of it doesn't have a whole lot and i, I told her i would do her a solid and just uh, top it off right yeah um i'll show this later but stupid me I, I have a die kit i completely forgot to bring the die kit so i have to clean this out with some nitrogen and some paper towels i've done it before it's not a big deal but yeah, I just forgot. So I also don't have, the reason I'm not doing the repair today, I don't have the coupling that I needed. I wanna cut this out and just, I mean, it's really close, but cut it out and put a different service port on it. I mean, not unless I completely just change this out. I do have these, maybe I'll change out this one. Um, that's a regular Schrader. We can just change out the Schrader. This one, I would like to cut it out as well. And I don't know. I mean, I do have the Cormax fittings. I could just replace them. It's up, I don't know, I'll figure it out that day. Um, but for now, we're just gonna get them going. It is cooling now. And uh, like I said, this got, I gave it to them yesterday afternoon and they barely approved it today afternoon, the next day, so. I, I was hoping to get an answer to do it in the morning, but you know how commercial uh, commercial approvals go. Didn't take much and it was in the high 70s before. Now it's actually somewhat cooling. I'm not gonna go too far with it. Just wanted to get some, some uh, decent cooling and then I'm gonna come back and uh, we gotta take everything out. I recover, patch and uh, Maybe wash it, just try and, try and straighten some of this out. But uh, yeah, they opted to fix it, so we'll go ahead and fix it. All right, we're back, I got my tools. This one is not that cold. This is the one that I saw oil on. So I'll have to investigate that. That one I can tell is sweating. And they just said, Somebody just came for maintenance or somebody's been doing maintenance. Would you look at that? Oh, there's no sun right now, but geez. 
So I'm just gonna do everything that I need to do and then I will uh, do my readings after. Those motors don't sound good either. Yeah, they are kind of pissed. And then he said something about the drain. I think that one was fine. Got our makeup, got our makeup here. here. Oh yeah. They said they cleared the drain, they were gonna put it back together and I don't know what, and here we are. That was not put back together. And Does that drain? It does drain out. I'm gonna let it, I'm gonna let the P-trap do its thing first and then I'll hook that up and raise it. There's no clamps either. So I'm gonna have to clamp that at least. Oh, they're all messed up. I got completely taken off. So yeah, he was upset about the drain too, that he was asking if it was connected, it's not. This one's dirty as shit too. I don't know if I can show you guys how dirty they are. So yeah, I'm not seeing any water access here. We're gonna have to go down. I'm about to get the uh, portable battery sprayer that I have. It's the turbo tank. Probably gonna have to fill it up a few times and get these cleaned out. Uh, micro channels pack a lot. So even if it looks slightly dirty, it, it's plugged up probably. So we're gonna clean that out. I don't know if it came out, come across on the camera, it didn't look like it did, but I can see a lot of dust in there. So yeah, you gotta have some strength to be in this trade, this thing is full of water, freaking heavy. I'm trying not to break this one because I did break one before, but it's because this piece sticks out. These are proprietary connections. I wish you could put your own strap, but it wasn't too bad. It is a high ass roof. And it's a long ways from the ladder axis, so we're in the middle. I just have them rope it up from here next time because we're like right here. Let's see if I can, because I might need three different trips at least of water. But well, I've been meaning to do a video on this soon, but essentially the way I use it, I have a Milwaukee battery. It takes DeWalt too, and it, it ships with its own battery that you have to plug into a, like their own cord. It's not, not any like Makita or anything else. So it's decent. We're gonna clean this out. Just rinsing it for today. I do want to quote on a maintenance agreement schedule. So they're also interested in seeing how much a new unit will cost. It's, it's seen better days, but it still works. You might be able to see, but the only bad thing is I'm splashing it on the other side of the coil, but yeah, it's all brown. And this little peephole to push the water down. And see, I don't know if you guys can see, but that's all dirt. And then uh, when I do the official maintenance on this, uh, there is a wand that comes with this that I should be able to put through the top, uh, even with the fans on. But for now, we're gonna just get it in here and wash it out the best we can. There has been dirt coming out. So I would just say stay tuned until I actually do the video on this on how to use it and what it comes with and how I use it. But it's been 
it's been clutch so far. Um, I'm actually almost done with this one. It wasn't super dirty, but I'm also not doing a proper maintenance. I didn't use a uh, micro channel safe cleaner. I didn't use the wand that I want. This is kind of just, you know, rinsing it through to help it. And then we're going to check the charge on that second compressor, see how low it is and all that. They're mostly rinsed. I don't have my, I don't have my uh, blower. So we'll let it dry out for a few minutes before I turn it back on. Gotta rinse all that out. But I still, I did this one and I did the, the cooler. The cooler wasn't horrible. Just gave it a little rinse just in case. Like I said, did this one. Uh, obviously the filters are a big problem. We'll check the charge when I turn it on. But I still have half the tank left of the turbo tank. So it did well on a condenser like this, not a huge one. And I would assume you could do one to two coils especially with that 15 degree spray. I think that came out or worked really well to help me preserve water. So I was able to push water through enough and clean it. And I still have half a tank because it's a four gallon tank. So I, got, I still got two gallons to do the last one and I can move on to troubleshooting with what's going on with this one. All right, so mind you, when I, the only thing I did not show and maybe I'll do like a quick check for you guys when the board was flashing oh, what the hell was it flashing i think it was doing two no that was just a control i i forgot what it was doing before it gave me a red light actually and it says something about heat and delay i don't know what it said so i just reset it because i figured you know we'll reset it if it's a issue then it'll fault out again but when i did my checks here all of them, all of, I like when they're connect, connections like that on the pressure switches and they're not like wired all the way through because for one, these are replaceable, easy to replace, but also you can just, you know, make sure you can get your lead in there and you can check voltage. So I checked all the points to ground, right? So I grounded on the one line on the copper, checked here, I had 26, 26, 25, 24, so nothing was tripped. There was nothing that was tripping it out. So I'm not, if I am low, I'm not low enough to trip a, a safety. So we're gonna see what pressures we're running at. Oh, this one's way dirtier. Black. I, got, I just barely put the water on it. That's all black. Yeah, this one's way dirty and they just had maintenance or they've been on a maintenance plan with somebody okay so we ran out it is more for like one maybe two condensers i wanted to rinse it off a little bit more but i didn't have enough uh, just because this one was so damn dirty i rinsed it out like three times and i wanted to rinse off the the roof but i'm not gonna have enough and i don't think it's worth going through all the trouble to go inside go back around get the water so this was just to kind of show them how dirty they were until, and then buy them some time so that they don't trip. Like I think that one was tripped on high head. Uh, so that they don't trip until they actually approve. They do want us to do their maintenance because obviously they said the other company was uh, lying to them. Their words, not ours. So let me uh, put this back up and then go check how the other one's doing. Man, it started vibrating so much that made my probe leak for a little bit. So we're gonna take it off, just stop it off, talk to them about uh, doing a leak check when we do the maintenance and we can get out of here. It's freaking hot. And of course, geez, there is clouds now. It's raining after I get off the roof. So initially I could see there was clouds. There was a bunch of them coming over, but like it was so damn hot this whole day. I'm getting out close to four and I got a little sprinkle too. And I'm like, it's going to rain today, isn't it? But it's probably going to be after I get off. It always happens. And when I'm on the roof, it was reading like 105 could have been a little bit hotter and it was a white they're both white roofs it gets really blinding all that good stuff all that fun stuff and then that one that had the weird axis like i said you have it has a ladder as a ladder that's attached to the the building 
thankfully this one was a lot bigger and then they must have taken off some of the it looked very weird it looked like they had uh broken some of the wall or something because it was there there was a like exposed concrete and it looked broken and stuff so I, I was able to rope up uh you know the refrigerant tank and all that without any hassle uh it was still very heavy i was just trying not to just trying not to think about it because my dad was even like he was there helping me he's like if you need anything i'll uh i'll hook it up to the rope and you can just you know bring it up and down you don't have to come down uh for anything and he's like i don't know how the hell you did it I was sitting down, you know, down on the floor and it was, I was struggling and I'm like, well, I just don't just try not to think about it. Cause it's, it's, it's hot. Uh, just make sure you take breaks, uh, drink something. I had, you know, um, I didn't bring all my Gatorades or anything today cause I didn't expect this many calls on the roof. I got lucky and I had been experienced or I had been, uh, working indoors for the past, like two weeks, almost also doing maintenance. So then this week I've had a lot of AC calls now. So, uh, and I was complaining to the guys, you know, Jake and Kurt, that I might want to pivot, or not pivot, but expand more. Uh, it's one thing to grow doing what we do, which, which is always welcome, but I need more, I wanted more HVAC work in particular, where I would have to turn to like residential work, but I would only want to do service, you know, stuff like that and then subcontract any other stuff out, kind of like what uh, Kurt does. And then I get Thursday or Friday, I just get slammed with a shitload of calls. So all in all, the, the main thing that I was insinuating here with the, uh, the they were tired of, of the previous company lying to them, right? So I don't know if somebody took over this place because we used to do work for them and then they kind of stopped. They only had a, I want to say three stores that we took care of. They've expanded to five now, and they think they're going to build even more. So it's a good account to get back. Uh, we've done work. They are very stingy, you know, all that kind of stuff. But I guess somebody else is taking over and wants stuff done and fixed. So they asked us to check, you know, some ACs, some walk-in boxes, and they were like, yeah, we've had a maintenance agreement. And they were actually just here. One of them was tripped out. It needed a cleaning. I didn't do a proper, you know, maintenance cleaning because I want them, or they, they know, they understand that we need to go out there in the morning, even though right now it's nice after I leave, uh, in the morning when it's not super hot so we can take our time because right now I'm just like trying to get off the damn roof. The uh, walk-in boxes do need some work, but it's nothing major. Uh, the TXV is acting up. We'll see if we have to change it out because the power head's not replace, replaceable. And those were extremely dirty too. So he's like, man, we've had so many complaints about things being dirty. I don't know if he's talking about inspectors or anything. And I was like, dude, this thing is like packed. So like we used a aerosol cleaner, but he kind of just cleaned it enough to get it breathing. And I was like, no, we're going to have to soak it really well. We'll go in there with that that turbo tank probably and, and push out all the water through it so we know we get it nice and clean and uh a lot of walk-in boxes if they don't take care of them uh especially if they hold raw meats uh this one holds a lot of veggies so onions you know acidic acidic products uh for one you know that damages a coil just for the air quality in there but also just dirt and dust combined with that is not good for the coil. So they're not cleaned regularly. Uh, those coils don't last. So a lot of maintenance. And that's another thing we're trying to get into is doing more maintenance. It keeps us busy during the off time and nobody does it. So my main thing, when I talked to my dad today about, you know, going up there, cause he's like, why he's like, he didn't like that. I had to take that turbo tank up there. It's not easy. It's full of water. Water weighs a lot, right? Four gallons of water. Uh, like I had said in the video, they use their own strap. I wish it was replaceable because I would love to put like a nice, strong padded strap on it. It was like, man, why do you have to take that up and this and that? I was like, I have no water access on the roof. And then this is a really tall roof. So I didn't see any spouts either on the floor or any close enough to run a water line or water hose. So I was like, I have no way to get water up there. This is the only way, right? That's where that something like that or the Milwaukee sprayers come in handy because you can at least 
rinse them out. That's something you can do. And then the more you do it, which is why I like to get people on a maintenance plan, the more you do it, like this time it'll be black, super dirty. The next time it won't be as bad. And then like it gets easier and easier, right? It prevents a lot of, uh, you know, bad motors, bad compressors, uh, even leaks on the discharge and stuff like that because it won't build up high pressure if it's clean. So all that, and he's like, man, he was worried about me taking that up. I was like, it has to be done. I can tell you just by that conversation that we had that that's why the previous company just lied and uh, said they cleaned it. But I'm like, how did they get water access up here? They probably didn't go through the trouble of getting either a bucket of water and a sprayer or something like the, a turbo tank. They probably didn't want to, didn't deal with it and just said, yeah, we cleaned it. You know, they, they're, they're clean. Anyway, I'm going on a rant. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. We will do the leak repair on the next video. I had to reschedule it. The issue they had is they approved it way too late. I told them early afternoon yesterday, uh, trying to bug them all night, trying to get an answer this morning and nothing. So then I was like, okay. And then they finally came in after lunch or around lunch. And I was like, I got other calls to get to. I'm not going to do it at the hottest time of the day. And uh, so we topped it off, got them going for now. And we'll be back Monday because it's Friday. We're not going to be able to go out till uh, Monday morning. And I already have a lot of stuff going on. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Appreciate you all for uh, watching and I'll see you guys.